Hello and welcome to the C++ Insights YouTube channel. I'm Andreas Fertig. I work as a C++ trainer offering classes worldwide, on-site or remote. This is my YouTube channel where I use my tool C++ Insights to teach you various topics related to C++. Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you what C++20 has in its toolbox to make things more explicit. So what I have here, and you notice I'm totally in Compile Explorer today, so that's uh, fine. We will go to C++ Insights later. Let's imagine I have a type meters and I have another type centimeters. And centimeters I can construct from meters, right? We know the conversion. And I also can convert centimeters into meters. We don't bother with the actual conversion or how we store the, the value, whether it's float int or something like that. We are talking about how these constructors and operators here are going to work. And you can see I followed a rule that's there for a long time. So single argument constructors, I make them explicit unless I have a better reason. Here I say I don't want an implicit conversion from meters to centimeters. My operator on the other hand, it's not guarded by the explicit. You can do the same thing, but I decided here that this conversion is just fine. If I have a wrapper here, you can envision it like a std optional or things like that. Maybe you have something implemented in your own code base. That wrapper here takes a type named T and it has a converting constructor that takes another type being able to initialize this wrapper. Once again, we don't focus on the details for the implementation of this wrapper, just a high level uh, view here for the things. And then I have a function fun. Fun takes a wrapper of centimeters called a parameter val and imagine it would do something really cool for you here. In main now I can call fun with centimeters and behind our max the compiler creates a wrapper object of centimeters for us. So this is all right, this is in the books, that's fine. So I'm not so happy that this one here compiles. Behind our backs, the compiler now creates a wrapper object where it passes the meters to and the converting constructor then creates me the centimeters object that's required here. But I made that one explicit, so I don't want the implicit conversion. And depending on the implementation of wrapper, I, I just removed that safeguard I have here. This is not what I want. And the question here now is how can we improve the situation? One way of doing so is saying, all right, I have way more code here now. Well, way more, made a little bit overstated. My wrapper now contains two constructors. One constructor that says, well, if u is convertible to t, then I don't have a uh, explicit guard here but in all the other cases, I make it explicit. My enable if here checks whether u is convertible to t. If so, I get a parameter type, non-type template parameter of bool, and I set that one to true. I do the same thing for the second constructor, just that this time the condition is negated. So if it's not convertible, then we make that one explicit. Now we can see I have to change my code here. Now I have to be explicit in saying I'm calling a wrapper of centimeters with a meters object. If I don't do that, we can see it doesn't compile anymore. So the comment here we can remove. Yeah, in this version it compiles, but in my original version it doesn't compile anymore. So this is obviously how you can approach things, let's say pre C20. But this is an awful lot of duplication and we didn't look at the most crucial part and this is the implementation of wrapper, right? So you might have variables that you initialize in the constructor's initializer list. Your wrapper might have a body, so you have to duplicate this entire implementation. This is nothing my example here carries, but it starts adding up very soon 
And you know that as well, once you start copying things, you're risking that you're fixing a bug just in one place, but not in the one or two others where you did the copy to thing. So what can we do? And this is where C++20 now comes in. Let's get rid of this constructor and let's get rid of the better part of that. So just say we have like in our initial code and the uh, converting constructor and let's see that things really work out like we want. So currently everything compiles, but it shouldn't. So now we have the explicit. We can mark this constructor with explicit, but then it's explicit all the time and we don't want that. And the new thing now is we can have a conditional explicit in C++20 and you see I'm doing the copy and paste stuff here. So my explicit in C++20 can take a set of parentheses and we can ask it whether it's or we can set it to whether true or false. So I can say if it's convertible to T and U, so if it's not convertible to T and U, then we make that thing explicit. And in all the other cases, it's not explicit. So once Compile Explorer is finished doing that, it's a hefty compile. I'm not sure why it's hanging. So let me do a reload here. All right, now we are back. You can see if I use the explicit with parentheses, which take a Boolean condition, so true or false, so explicit true or explicit false, then this one kicks in because U is not convertible to T. So I have to spell it out now like I want it. And I'm now creating the wrapper object explicitly for centimeters and voila, we are there. So this spares us the entire duplication of the constructor that's marked with explicit conditionally. So that's a, I think, very valuable thing. You can go further. So if you're looking at the operator here, and I'm never sure whether this is a good use or a misuse, but I think it's a good use. You can see I, I didn't mark it explicit, but the problem is you you see that, but you don't know my intention. So was it intentional or did I forget it? And one thing that I think turns out really nice is to say, I make this one explicit false. So I can now leave breadcrumbs behind stating, yeah, I thought about that and I really don't want to mark this operator X as explicit. So give that one a thought. I think it's a new tool. It wasn't designed to be used for that, but you can use it to, yeah, to our favor and, and do things more explicitly, hopefully preventing more bugs. A second example where this explicit can be helpful is a scenario like I have it here. Suppose I have a data structure vector. That one takes a type named T in its template head. It creates a T star M data and it comes with a constructor and that one is a very argument constructor. In the constructor, initialize a list with new, I allocate an array of T that's equivalent to the number of arguments in my parameter pack and forward everything perfectly. I also check with C++20's concepts requires clause that the arguments here are convertible to T. So we are passing the right type or at least a a convertible, a usable type. And then I having my std vector here. Why do you want a implementation like that and not simply use a initializer list, right? That's a good question. So for one reason, your initializer list allows only one type. So if you want to do conversions, maybe that's a, a problem here. And the other thing is I cannot move from a std initializer list, but maybe I have expensive types and want to be able to leverage move. So that might justify a constructor like that. And that one is fine, right? If you can see I have a collection of coins and a collection of stamps and my vector here, also my print function here takes a vector of double. I can print that one here. We talked about explicit. So what if I foresee a case where like in stamp, I only have one parameter that I'm calling a vector constructor with. 
by the book I should make that one explicit, but how can I do that here? And the answer is with the conditional explicit. I make it explicit in the very specific case when size of the argument pack is equivalent to one. So this would be another way doing that. If you transform this, we can see in that line number three now no longer compiles here without the explicit previously didn't show you that, sorry for that. Without the explicit, it transforms. With the explicit in now, we are guarding at least this case, we're recalling print with a different type that, yeah, is convertible in the end, but we don't want this implicit conversion to happen. So this is how we guard it. This is another usage of this conditional explicit. Use it for your veridic constructor templates, conversion templates, where you also want to have them marked explicit correctly. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the episode and if so, please hit the subscribe button and I'm looking forward to teaching you more C++ in the next episode. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.